Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. Now today it's another episode of LTFC Weekly. If you guys do not know what LTFC Weekly is, basically I cover everything that's happened in the past week to do with Luton and the Championship. Before I get into the video guys, can we smash 80 likes on this video? And also, if you are new, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so it would mean a lot to me if you guys could subscribe to the channel. So let's get on with the video. So on Monday it came out that Luton's first three games will not be put on Sky Sports. For me, I'm not really bothered about Luton being on Sky. As a season ticket holder, I get to watch all nine games for free. So I'm not really too bothered about us being on TV. I think us going on TV will just put more pressure on the team. For me, it doesn't really matter too much if we do get put on TV. But I suppose if we do get put on Sky, we get more money as it's going to be on TV. But depending on how well we do in the rest of the nine games in the season, will determine if we're going to get put on TV or not. Moving on to Tuesday, Luton introduced like this scheme where Luton fans um, can buy like a cardboard cutout, like a selfie of themselves and get put into the stadium. Now, I know one of the German teams did this when they first started playing football and it's just a good way of making money for the football club. And obviously through this pandemic, Luton are struggling with money. So it's a good idea to raise some money. When Luton fans are watching themselves on the iFollow like streaming service, they get to see their cardboard cut out. And from the players' perspective, it looks like they actually are playing in front of a crowd. Moving on to Wednesday, it came out that League One and League Two, their football has finished. They will not be playing any more games this season. And obviously if Luton do stay up in the championship, they will play Coventry and Rotherham. Out of contract player Danny Hilton did an interview this week so majority of this video will be about Danny Hilton as that's pretty much what this week has been about it's all been about Danny and what his future is at the club but anyway in his first like part of his interview he mentioned about how he wants to remain as a Luton Town player and he wants to help obviously keep Luton up this season and he wants to do this despite being out of contract he's willing to play as well in terms of giving Danny a new contract or not I mentioned this like in a previous video that if Danny does well in these like remaining games, I don't see why we can't offer him a new contract if we do stay up in the championship. However, if we were to get relegated to League One, then I don't see why we won't keep Danny as Danny knows Nathan. Danny is capable of playing in League One. So I don't see why we won't see Danny in the future. But if he doesn't do well in these remaining games, Nathan Jones will have big questions whether or not to give Danny Hilton a new contract. More information that came from Danny Hilton's interview, he mentioned that Graham Jones, he kind of lost the Luton way of playing, especially in the championship, and it just wasn't the right fit for the job. And Danny also mentioned the lack of like playing time under Jones, like Jones didn't trust him because Danny didn't play enough under Jones and to gain Jones's trust, this is Graham Jones by the way, you needed to play well on the pitch and obviously Danny wasn't able to do that. This whole situation with Graham Jones, it's come across massively that the players just didn't enjoy playing under him, whereas Graham Jones made out that the players did enjoy playing under him. So it's quite interesting to see like, the differences between the manager and the players like the players are much more happier as Nathan understands them more whereas with Graham he just wasn't able to continue what Nathan Jones did before. Luton Town chairman David Wilkinson also came out this week and done an interview he mentioned that Nathan Jones is the right man for the job. He mentioned that McArthur convinced him as well that Nathan Jones was the right man for the job. But the big thing that came from his interview was that he actually forgives Nathan Jones and that's our chairman of the football club. And obviously, if the chairman of the football club, if the players of the football club are forgiving him, then surely the fans should. But obviously, some fans won't because they will never trust him again. Just like me, I won't trust him again. However, I do accept his apology. He also said in his interview that fans are now warming to Nathan Jones. And I think some fans are. However, some fans will never trust Nathan Jones again. And it's quite clear that they never will. Even if Nathan Jones is successful at the football club, fans will never forgive him. I do think over time, if Nathan Jones does do well at the club, then fans will forgive him. Like if Nathan Jones keeps us up, for example, and we get promotion to the Premier League, surely fans will forgive him from his first mistake. But who knows? I can't read people's minds, but I'm assuming fans will, but you never know. Some EFL news that came out on Tuesday, the EFL chairman, Rick Parry, mentioned that a lot of clubs will go bust because of this pandemic. If the EFL like sorted like the rules out in terms of stopping like dodgy owners 
um, breaking rules, owning football clubs when they don't even have the money to pay for it, sorting the wages out so clubs are not overspending. Football teams will not be in this mess if the EFL did their job correctly in the first place. But that's my view on that matter. And lastly, on Tuesday, Luton did a fantastic thing and they gave fans the ability to become legends at the club by allowing fans to refund like their season tickets back to the club so then the club can obviously use that money in terms of giving it to the youth, giving it to like the charities which Luton support, giving it to like the supporters trust, like all different like parts of the club to help keep the club going for the future. And if you did this, you then would get to watch all the nine games for free. And also your name will go on one of the shirts for next season, which is quite good. Like all the names of all the people who donated back to the club will have on their shirt their name which for me is a fantastic idea to do i think we're the only club to do that in the football league as well fair play to our owners for organizing that because that is a brilliant idea i have refunded my money from my season ticket back to the youth so i'm looking forward to see my name on that shirt next season moving on to thursday it came out that danny hilton was very happy on how the club are dealing with this pandemic in terms of keeping it safe for all the players and the staff he's very impressed on how well, Luton are keeping it safe so no one is catching the virus while training at the football club. Another interesting piece of information that came out on Thursday. Luton were meant to go to Australia for a pre-season friendly. Luton were meant to play a team called Perth Glory in Australia and we were meant to play them in a pre-season friendly before next season. And fans in Australia or fans in England, it actually doesn't matter where you are in the world, but you could actually go and watch Luton play Perth Glory in Australia in a pre-season friendly. I was very surprised to um, read this because normally when Luton play like abroad, they never really let fans like watch the pre-season friendlies. I know last year they did in Portugal, but majority of the time you're not actually allowed to go and watch these like behind the closed door friendly games. But this time round, we were actually meant to play Perth Glory in Australia. So it'd be interesting to see if that's actually true. And two, will that happen in the future as well. And the last piece of information that came out on Thursday was Leeds and Swansea are not uh, like taking the money which Luton fans have already bought for tickets. So if you bought a ticket to watch Luton play Leeds at their place or Swansea, Swansea are not actually keeping that money. They're actually letting Luton keep that money for themselves, which is obviously a fantastic thing to do because Swansea and Leeds don't actually have to do that. They could keep that money for themselves. But no, they said to Luton, look, it's your fans, you discuss with your fans whether or not they want to refund and you keep the money and deal with it how you want to deal with it, which is a fantastic thing to do. Moving on to Friday, Andrew Shinney came out and said that the return of Nathan Jones has been a very smooth like transition. Obviously, Nathan Jones knows majority of these players, so it's always going to be a smooth transition as he knows the players, you know, he pretty much signed majority of these players and he knows how to play the right football with these players as well. Talking about like the Luton players in the squad, now majority of them, this is like their second attempt at playing championship football because some of these players have obviously been released by championship clubs, but some of them have had like relegation in the past with championship clubs as well. So this is like their second attempt in playing the championship. Now Sonny Bradley came out and said that he wants to make sure Luton stay up in the championship as this is his second attempt as well trying to make sure he is a championship player you have to think about it like players want to be a championship player they don't want to be a league one player they want to be championship players and they want to play at the highest league possible so for the players they do actually want to stay up this season because they want to be a championship player so it's interesting to see that Sonny Bradley he does really badly want to stay up this season as he wants to maintain being a championship player some like disappointing news that came out on Friday Birmingham will not face any penalties due to them like misconduct charges which they did like I don't know when they did it but they've obviously been breaking the rules but they're not going to face any penalties and like I said with the EFL like they don't they have rules in place when clubs break them they never punish clubs however for me I always see them punish the clubs which try and do well but in terms of clubs actually breaking the rules they never punish them. It always gets delayed, 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 and then they get away with it. Birmingham in the past have broken plenty of rules, but they only get like punished every so often. Sheffield Wednesday and Derby are two other clubs that could face penalties, 
but I can't see it happening. The EFL, for me, they don't punish clubs at all. And I can't see them actually punishing Derby or Sheffield Wednesday, which they should because those two clubs have obviously done something wrong, but I just can't see it happening. Now, like I said in the video, Luton have done that fantastic like become a legend scheme where you get to donate your refund of your season ticket back to the club. Well, 90% of Luton Town fans who are season ticket holders have donated back to the club, which is fantastic to see. Obviously, some people can't due to finances, but obviously I highly recommend you refunding it and giving it back to the club. But if you can't, then that's fine. But still, it's fantastic to see fans refunding their money back to the club to make sure that the club obviously stays alive and obviously be able to spend the money which the fans are giving them to like the youth or to other like schemes which the club are trying to work on. Talking about giving money back to the club and the club using that money for like the youth, for example, the club came out on Friday and mentioned that the academy has had an upgrade. It's moved to category two upgrade, which means that Luton's academy is a lot better and we get put into like a better league um we have like an under 23s now so that will be happening for next season like a lot of our youth players who sign professional deals like go off to like other championship clubs to play for their under 23s well now that doesn't actually have to happen they get to play in our under 23 squad and also like first team players who are struggling to obviously play games in the first team will get to play in the under 23s as you're allowed to have i think it's free over the age of 23 players can play in the under 23s which is obviously a fantastic thing for Luton to do as players who can't get into the team get regular game time and also our youth players get better as well so it's very important that Luton improve their youth like system and get better as we want to create more James Justins like more Curtis Davis in the future and finally it came out today in fact that Sonny Bradley doesn't think there is any issues in Nathan Jones returning back to the club and getting things ready for Preston North End next Saturday which is obviously very good news as we want to make sure we hit the ground running when we play these remaining nine games so there you have it guys that is the end of the video it's quite a long one so I do appreciate you guys for listening drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it comment down below are you excited for Preston North End next Saturday let me know down below subscribe to the channel if you are new don't forget to follow me across all my social media if you haven't done already and I'll see you guys in the next video